the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BT ZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and this is a, I guess you could say, a unexpected but potentially a expected episode, I guess, of the Paracave Podcast as... The news came through on Monday evening that the Parramatta Eels were or have sacked their coach, Brad Arthur. Now, myself, this is a little bit late as it is Tuesday night that I am recording this and uh, all the news has already been out uh, for a couple of days now as I was on route home from Magic Round when all this broke. I was at a Brisbane airport about to board a flight to Sydney. Now... Uh, The news came through that the Parramatta Eels had sacked Brad Arthur, coach of the Parramatta Eels. Now, getting more information about that when I landed and uh, also during the day today, it's, uh, look, it's a little bit of a shock. Now, I will start off by saying that I am a Brad Arthur fan. I have been a fan of his coaching and leadership at the Parramatta Eels during his tenure. I did also say that it was my personal opinion that if Parramatta did not make the finals in 2024, that I think he may be shown the door as coach of the Eels, as that would be two years in a row that the club hadn't made the finals. Uh, It wasn't to be, obviously, this year. It was a lot earlier than expected. The loss to the Melbourne Storm wasn't too good either, 48 points to 16. But it has been revealed that this decision was made about three weeks ago on the 1st of May that the club would be parting ways with Brad. And, look... For me, that just it, it's a little bit strange and a little bit weird that three weeks ago they made the decision to part ways with Brad and they didn't announce it then or they didn't act on it then. They still, it was three weeks later uh, before Brad got sacked from the club so I really do find that a little bit strange look obviously I don't know what goes on in the behind the scenes I'm not that privy to that information so um, I obviously don't know what happened in that three weeks time now before that the South Sydney Rabbitohs had had sacked their coach Jason Dimitriou uh, from his position there and there was a lot of talk about Wayne Bennett signing with the Rabbitohs and look it had come out today that the Parramatta Eels thought of this decision on May 1 and May 2 that they reached out to Wayne and tried to convince him to sign with the Parramatta Eels as head coach. Now uh, as at time of recording this podcast which is nearly 10 o'clock at night on a Tuesday night it had been officially announced that Wayne would be the coach of the South Sydney Rabbitohs uh, for three years starting in 2025 and that the Parramatta Eels had missed out on his signature to coach the Eels. Now it had been said I think in the media that Wayne had said that 
He has unfinished business at South Sydney, and that is potentially the reason why he chose South Sydney over the Eels. There was a lot of rumours before that as well that uh, Wayne Bennett himself reached out to the Eels and the Eels didn't uh, speak to him. Now, I don't know if that is true at all. Uh, The club has come out and said in the meantime that they actually did reach out to him and uh, wanted him as head coach and tried to get him as head coach. But he had unfinished business at the South Sydney Rabbitohs, so he signed with them. Now, Brad Arthur, uh, very disappointing. As I said, recording this on a Tuesday, it is actually his 50th birthday so not the ideal birthday present, but I guess you can't time these things. I guess it could be just coincidental. Um, but uh, anyway, if Brad is ever listening to this podcast, I'm sure he probably won't want to or won't be. But happy birthday, Brad. Happy 50th birthday. Um, look, he was uh, via the Sydney Morning Herald. He left a quote saying in an article, had you told me I would coach 264 games for Parramatta, reach the grand final and watch my son debut, then get sacked, I'd do it all again. I'd sign up for it all again tomorrow. Now, Brad is the longest serving Longest ever serving coach at the Parramatta Eels with Brian Smith behind him. Uh, 264 games he has coached, uh, reached final series, reached the grand final, as he mentioned there, in 2022 against the Penrith Panthers. Now, just a little bit of a sort of history lesson, I guess, on Brad Arthur. Now, he was appointed the assistant coach at the Parramatta Eels in way back in 2011, uh, following the appointment of Steve Kearney as head coach. Now, Steve Kearney himself was fired in 2012 with six games remaining, and Brad Arthur was appointed the caretaker coach. So he had six games there. But then when Ricky Stewart was announced as head coach for 2013, he was informed that he would not be retained as assistant coach. So he moved to Manly under the coaching of Jeff Tuvey. So as of the late uh, 2013, Arthur accepted a three-year deal to join the Parramatta Eels as head coach. So not too long after that. So Stephen Kearney got fired in 2012. Ricky Stewart left the club at the end of the 2013 season. And 2014 was the start of Brad Arthur's reign at the Parramatta Eels. Now, it was a couple of years that was pretty difficult for the Eels in that time as it was a, I guess you could say, a very hard struggle. A um, t- couple of wooden spoons, 2012 and 13. Um, 14, the Eels finished in 10th position. And 15, the Eels finished in 12th position. So uh, a couple of... I guess you could say 10, 12 mid-table finishes uh, in his first few seasons of coaching the Eels. And 2016, look, we all know about what happened in 2016. It was the salary cap drama that hit the Parramatta Eels uh, on May 3, my birthday, actually. So a uh, great birthday present for myself that year. Um, and look... The Parramatta Eels, though, I guess they were going pretty well at that time. They were deducted, I think it was 12 points in total uh, from that season. So, yes, they were deducted 12 competition points for salary cap breaches. So they still had the opportunity to win games and potentially play in finals. Look, if those 12 points weren't deducted from their total they would have played finals that season they would have snuck into eighth eighth spot on the ladder so uh 2016 could have been a year of playing finals football 
Now, previously to the NRL season, they had what was called a NRL Nines competition, which which at the time in 2016 was played over in in Auckland. It was known as the Auckland Nines. And look, Parramatta ended up winning 22 points to four. So a little bit of success there. But unfortunately, that was later taken off them in the 2016 season due to that salary cap drama so look 2017 rolls along and Brad Arthur has done a great job to get Parramatta to their first final series since 2009 so we all know what happened in 2009 Uh, but they finished fourth on the ladder which was a great effort and they unfortunately though they went on to lose both their finals games and look the finals game was down, one of them was down in Melbourne, I was there that day, and look, it was just a great turnaround from the year before, I thought, to get into a top four position, so it was, it it was a very uh, good performance, unfortunately in 2018, uh, the Parramatta Eels got the club's 14th wooden spoon, only winning six games all season, so look, I've got no idea what happened that year. It was a very slow, very slow year, very slow start to the year in 2018. Uh, It was zero from uh, six games. So on their seventh game, they got a win and then another win and then another streak of losses. So it was a very tough season in 2018, that is for sure. But look, 2019 rolls along and look there's a new stadium at Parramatta with what's now known as Combank Stadium being uh, Parramatta Stadium which was there previously was knocked down and what is now known as Combank Stadium was um, set up, built and so there was a big hope for the new Stadium and the team in 2019, especially after that disastrous 2018 season. So it was a good start. Look, one of the most memorable games was 51 points to six in that opening game there uh, at West, well, it was called Western Sydney Stadium, it was, uh, Combank Stadium now, as it was Bank West Stadium back then. Um, and so a massive win there to the Tigers. Um, and look, he was given a contract extension in 2019 to keep him at the club until the end of 2021. Uh, and another great success story in 2019 was the semi-finals or qualifying final record score game there. Parramatta defeated Brisbane 58 points to nil, so a great result there as well. Look, then unfortunately though, 2020, 21 and 20, uh, sorry, 19, 20 and 21 straight set losses in the final series so people i guess were questioning fans were questioning could brad arthur take Parramatta to the next level uh losses in 20 or a win in 2019 in that first semi-final obviously but then a loss 32 nil to the melbourne storm uh down there at amy park and then 2020 rolls along and straight set losses to Melbourne and South Sydney. Obviously, 2020, uh, that game against South Sydney, there was a, another drama there. It was the Michael Jennings uh, drugs drama that happened on that night uh, before they played the South Sydney Rabbitohs. So, not too good a preparation I guess you could say for uh, the team there Hayes Dunster came in that day uh, in that game very tough opportunity there Uh, 2020 uh, sorry what am I doing 2021 
it was you thought maybe they were getting a little bit closer. They had a good win against Newcastle in the first week of the finals and then a 8-6 loss to arch rivals, the Penrith Panthers. They seem to have the edge against the Panthers but in regular club games, but when it became the big games in the finals, it seemed that the Panthers just knew what to do. And it, as I said, for Parramatta Eels fans, it was being questioned as to could Brad be the man to take us, take the Parramatta Eels to that next level after all those consecutive losses in final series. Now, we know what happened in 2022. It We got to the uh, semifinals and finished finished in sixth spot, I think it was, on the ladder. Uh, a loss, a, sorry, top four it was. What am I talking about? Uh, top four because we beat Melbourne in that last round of that competition to get into the top four. So we, again, lost to Penrith in the opening game of the finals, having beat them twice during the year and then went on to beat Canberra, and then North Queensland in the prelim final up there at Queensland Country Bank Stadium to get into the 2022 grand final against the Panthers, where unfortunately Parramatta went down again, 28 points to 12. Uh, So another loss to the Panthers in the big game. Uh, 2023 was a disastrous season, you could say, with Parramatta not making the finals and finishing in 10th spot after making a grand final. Having said that, South Sydney and North Queensland, who uh, North Queensland were in the prelim final against Parramatta, did not make the finals either. South Sydney made the finals. They weren't there either. So three teams that made the finals the year before, they weren't there. But especially the grand final side, you thought maybe they could build on that and get into those finals again. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. And 2024 rolls along. And um, unfortunately, it hadn't been the... It was an okay start, two out of three wins. Uh, but then that's where the wheels fell off and a loss against a big loss against Canberra, a win against a struggling Queen, a Cowboys side, a disastrous, embarrassing loss against the Dolphins up in Darwin. A look a much uh, improved effort against Manly, but still going down a lot uh, again. A little bit of a more improved performance, I thought anyway, against the Broncos, but still went down. And then a uh, magic round 2024, absolutely embarrassment. Uh, 48 points to 16, having in 2019 been beat by the Melbourne Storm at Magic Round, 64 points to 10. Now, so, and that was probably, well, as I said earlier, three weeks before that, they probably, the club made their mind that uh, Brad would not be the coach moving forward. So, as I said, a bit strange as to why they kept him on for that long. And uh, only those people at the club will know what will be going on there. Now, in terms of... Uh, in terms of players, he is proud of the fact that he has turned players into young men who have seen uh, some of them have families and, and start-up families as well, uh, turn them into rep players as well. What I thought Brad had a good knack of doing was turning an average sort of a first grader into you know a regular starter in first grade um we saw he's no look he's no Craig Bellamy obviously hasn't won a premiership but he has that knack of turning some sort of average first graders into good first graders um Isaiah Papali'i he stands out in in the mind as one prime example he came from the New Zealand Warriors as a consistent I guess first grader but then really made his mark at the Parramatta Club in 21 and 22 and now that he's at the West Tigers on a big contract uh, and look 
his development at Parramatta just went up and up and up. So that's probably definitely why the Tigers wanted him. Look, Nathan Brown as well back in the day, he became an origin player underneath uh, Brad Arthur, uh, Clint Gutherson, Mitchell Moses, uh, Ryan Madison. Uh, they have become origin players under Brad Arthur. Uh, Dylan Brown has become the New Zealand 5'8 as well. So he does have a knack of improving players and turn some players into quality players as well. Junior Paolo as well, origin player. RCG as well under Brad's reign, although I think he may have played origin at Penrith, but he still did play state of origin for New South Wales at Parramatta. So, look. In that retrospect, he can develop players in there. He was criticised for not necessarily giving junior players a go as much as what the fans had wanted uh, to see. Uh, Ethan Sanders is probably one that comes to mind. As I said before, I'm I'm not privy to that uh, coaching backroom information, so um, we don't know the real story as to what happened there, but um, he is one that comes to mind. Another one, Blaze Talangi, who has made his debut in 2024, but the fact that he has played uh, three positions uh, so far, uh, four positions, I think it is, fullback, centre, wing, and 5 eighth, I think they're the four positions that he has played this season at Parramatta. Um, so there was a little bit of criticism there. There was a little bit of criticism about his bench rotation as well and not being used um effectively you could say there was a couple of games there where one player on the bench didn't get a run at all uh fans were questioning that rotation um and so that was a criticism i guess you could say at times of brad arthur um but again i'm not a nrl coach so i don't know the thinkings behind that one um i think also as a Parramatta Eels fan, I guess, again, I'm not an NRL coach, but one criticism criticism that I did have uh, throughout his coaching career at Parramatta was the fact that, you know, sometimes Parramatta, they would struggle to win games at times, but the same team was picked usually each and every week uh, I would have expected a few little changes here and there at the time but again I'm not a coach so I don't know the reason why but that that was just my personal little criticism as well as I said at the top of the podcast I am a Brad Arthur fan and uh, look at the end of the day I thought it was probably time for him to go if Parramatta didn't make the finals, the club made that decision a lot earlier as um, as uh, I thought they would anyway. Um, look, the question now remains, well, before I get to that, the um, Brad still wants to coach. He's a coach. Uh, he will probably, uh, he'll, he'll get a coaching gig somewhere else um, and... He is coach, so it, whether that be junior football, uh, look, it might even be go back to bush footy, but he will be back in the NRL somewhere. Uh, when that is, I am not too sure where that is. I am not too sure at the moment either, but he will definitely be back in the NRL somewhere. Will it be an assistant coach, first of all? Yes, possibly. Um, but then he may also get a head coaching role as well at another NRL club. So uh, just like to say thank you very much, Brad, for your services to the Parramatta Eels. Uh, 11 years at the Eels, the highest coaching uh, head coach at the Parramatta Eels, 264 games. There's been some good times, there have been some bad times. One that sticks out, I guess, for yourself, as you mentioned in your quote to the Sydney Morning Herald, was uh, Jake Arthur's debut, and that was up in Magic Round. 
uh, versus the Warriors, where Jake did score a try, and that was just great to see your emotion in the box that day. I think uh, when the game was over and he came back into the sheds and that embrace that you had with him, I think that was one of the highest rating social media videos that went around that year. So uh, they're the sort of things that you'd love to see in rugby league. Um, thank you, as I said, thank you very much for your services, and look, I wish you all the best in the future, uh, whichever way you go, and whatever endeavours you take on, so I hope I can maybe, look, as I said, I know you probably won't be listening to this, but hopefully maybe I can get you on the podcast one day uh, for a chat and about your career at the Eels because I'd love to interview you and ask you a few questions. So hopefully maybe one day we can make this happen. Take a little bit of a break for now. Uh, Enjoy the rugby league. I know you said on a interview on NRL 360 that you were going to probably still keep an eye on the boys and see how they're going this season. So uh, enjoy the footy there. So the question there remains, who will take over Brad as head coach of the Parramatta Eels in 2025? As I said before, Trent Barrett is the interim head coach and that one is an interesting one as well, especially for fans as well. They thought maybe Nathan Kalis might take the job. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Trent can get this team up for this week's game against South Sydney and whether they will perform for him as well because I expect the Eels to probably have a plan in place as to who they're new head coach will be uh, when that will be revealed who will know maybe three four five weeks time uh, for 2025 so maybe Trent has a little bit of time to impress Uh, I don't think he will be the head coach in 2025 maybe he might hang around as assistant coach but um, i Don't think so, as he was under that Brad Arthur head coaching, um, I guess you could call it, regime, I guess. Uh, But I I don't think he will be there. Look, a couple of contenders that could take over the job. Justin Holbrook's name has been mentioned. Um, Jason Ryle's name has been mentioned. Michael Maguire, the New South Wales coach. Now, look, he's probably... He's the New South Wales coach this year. He's unlikely to quit his origin post before he's coached a game, but uh, who knows? He may just coach this year. He would love another opportunity as a head coach in in the NRL. There was rumours a couple of years ago that he would come as an assistant under Brad Arthur, Um, but... um, that didn't eventuate. He has won a premiership at South Sydney. And I guess it may be just interesting to see how he goes as New South Wales coach as in Dean, in um, Michael Maguire. Dean Young as well. He did a pretty good job with the St George Dragons there as a caretaker coach when I think it was Paul McGregor. Uh, got the flick there a few years ago now. Did a good job up at North Queensland as a defensive coach up there. And look, he could be, he is considered as one of the best up and coming coaches in the game. Um, is a head coach something that he wants to do? Yeah, I guess so. Does he want to do it at the Dragons or another club? Well, the Dragons have got Shane Flanagan there now. So. If I, I'm assuming that if a head coaching role becomes available, he will probably want to do that. Um, look, Blake Green, Sam Burgess, Jason Demetrio, he's looking for a job at the moment as well. Um, a few people have mentioned Steve McNamara over there in England, uh, Adrian Lamb, although he has just signed a new contract with the Lee Leopards for another couple of years as well. Someone out of left field that somebody mentioned to me was Michael Checker as well, the rugby union coach, who has done a little bit of assistant 
coaching at the Roosters under Trent Robinson. Also coaches the Lebanese rugby league team as well. Um, so that one is an interesting one indeed. Um, so there are a few choices there. It'll be interesting to see who gets the job and which way they go. Could there be a potential ex Parramatta boy get the job? Do you need a Parramatta boy to get the job? Do, can it be an outside person um, who doesn't necessarily know the history of the Eels, uh, doesn't have a connection to them? I know that uh, Brad Arthur had a massive connection to the Eels. It was a major part of his life, so um, potentially you don't need a person who is attached as Brad was to the Eels to coach a, a Parramatta Eels team. So maybe that's where someone else would go as well. That's Maybe that's where, maybe that's the line that they'll go down. But if they were going to go an old boy, uh, maybe Luke Burt coaches up in the Queensland Cup system. Nathan Kalis, he coaches the New South Wales Cup team. Uh, there's a couple there. Jim Dimmick has done a little bit of coaching as well. He's currently an assistant coach over at Manly Sea Eagles. He used to play at the Parramatta Eels and obviously the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. So they, look, there are options out there. Um, who will get the job? Who knows? Just have to wait and see who goes from there. Um, do you take a rookie coach? Do you take an experienced coach? Uh, it's always good, I guess, um, having experience on your side. Michael Maguire, he is an, a, a premiership winning coach, uh, won the comp with South back in 2014. Uh, Jason Riles, he's a rookie coach, but has done his apprenticeship under Craig Bellamy down at the Storm. Um, he's also worked at the Roosters as well under Trent Robinson as well. So do you go rookie or experience? I think... Probably what Parramatta needs at the moment is another experienced um, coach. And I think that would have to be someone who doesn't have an attachment with any of the players there, who isn't afraid to make those decisions to drop players if they're not performing. Uh, and I think, you know, that person if you're going to say that that would be Michael Maguire but and also to if you get a inexperienced coach a rookie coach that could also be a good thing as well because as I said they would not be afraid to make those hard decisions to drop players as one of the things that they will do in their job so um to keep their to keep their job because we all know this is a results driven business so I would probably say Michael McGuire and Jason Riles are the two top two candidates. I wouldn't count out Justin Holbrook as well, but um, just have to wait, wait and watch this space, I guess, with the Parramatta Eels as to see what happens. But look, that's all I'm going to ramble on, I guess. Um, I know I can a bit about when, especially when it comes to Parramatta, but. As I said before, thank you, Brad, for your services to the Eels. It was unfortunate that it had to end this way, uh, but it probably is, I guess, the best for the club and, and yourself as well. Um, look, there's no uh, stress. There, there is a lot of stress in coaching an NRL side. Unfortunately for yourself, you don't have to worry about the uh, pulling your hair out situation. Um and look, I, I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, listeners, for listening to this. Look, let me know your thoughts about who you think will be the Parramatta Eels coach in 2025. Do you have someone that I haven't mentioned in the podcast as a potential coach for the Eels? Let me know. Let me know in the comments on the post that I'll do for this podcast um, or even just send me a message but thank you very much for listening to this Brad Arthur coaching podcast um, I really appreciate it please don't forget to subscribe to the Instagram channel as well 
tell all your family and friends and also Apple, Spotify, all those places where you get your podcast from. I really appreciate the support. So thank you very much for listening. And as I always say, the Paracay podcast, by the fan, for the fans. Go para. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Paracay Podcast.